Okay, well, thank you, and I'd like to introduce Richard Hoy. Moving on to a, a new technology, um, looking at smart meters and uh, power management within the ELF frequency range. And R Richard is from the Energy Networks Australia. Thank you. Thank you, Rodney. Um, I'm from the Energy Networks Association. Probably most of you know what it is, but anyway, it's the industry association that represents electricity transmission and distribution businesses. It also represents gas transmission and distribution, but they don't have a great interest in this, this part of the, the technology we're looking at. Um, we have had for some time, a, well, uh, we've had a long-term program about 50 hertz ELF um, health effects from the power system and the possible health effects there. Um, in the past, we haven't been so interested in RF matters, but the, um, the smart meter issue has brought the RF in more into focus for the industry. So, uh, so well. um, smart meters, as you probably know, are a component <coughs> of advanced metering infrastructure. This has been progressively installed in various countries to try and increase the efficiency of the electricity network. It basically enables the businesses that supply electricity and the customers who consume electricity to communicate a bit more than just the, the, the quarterly meter reading. It uses RF transmission, so basically, as Andrew Wood mentioned, you've virtually got a little mobile phone in your meter that sends information from the meter back to the electricity business. This way will be efficient. It gets rid of meter readers and it, it will also enable more sophisticated controls of electricity usage to be introduced progressively over time. I don't wish to talk about the usefulness of the smart meters particularly, but only about the health effects of the RF transmissions. So as I said, uh, it's basically a mobile phone. We're judging the health effects of the smart meters based on the effects of the mobile phone work that's been done over 20 odd years. Uh, there's not a long history of smart meter installations at this stage. The most extensive installations are probably in the US and um, Canada where they've had them for five or ten years. So we haven't got the same um, level of expertise in studying the health effects, but by drawing some conclusions from the mobile phone work that's been done, we can pretty much um, decide where, we, where we're going. So signals from the smart meters basically a very low power a, meet, uh, a watt or less, and less than the signals from your typical mobile phone. They occur in short bursts. Once again, um, Andrew mentioned there might be quite a, a few bursts over the time, but typically less than 1% of the time will the, the mobile phone transmitter inside the smart meter be actually transmitting something. The signals are low, and of course the signals decrease as you move away from the smart meter transmitter itself. So what I'm saying is any work that's been done on mobile phones will apply even more so to the signals that are coming out of smart meters. Is it safe? Well, the industry bases its understanding on the work of health expert advisory committees and regulatory agencies around the world. So, I mean, obviously, APHANSA is a, a prime agency in Australia, the Commonwealth Department of Health, health departments in other places, or inquiries that have been set up by regulators perhaps to look at the possible health impacts. So we're not the experts on health, we sort of run an electricity system, but the health impacts we are guided by other people. So the, the basic cons um, summary is that wherever these things have been looked at, that the transmissions from smart meters easily meet any RF standards that are around, whether it be Arpanza or ICNIRT or other standards. So for Australia, you can see, let's see, uh, I that? Yeah. Um, for Australia, our PANSA is developed the standard and the ACMA looks after administering it. And you can see, they say, the overall exposure from the smart meters is very low and well below exposure limits. So I'll just run through a few of these. It's not just our PANSA. WHO says much the same sort of thing. To date, no adverse effects have been established caused by mobile phone use, hence even more so um, from the use of smart meters. They mention here the, um, the Category 2B classification of RF. There are some indications of increased glioma for those who report the highest 10% of cumulative hours of use 
no consistent risk. So it's been classified as that, but really you'd be looking at the lower end of, of the usage. You could be looking at the, what comes out of the smart meter, not the higher end of the usage. So I don't think this makes a, a big difference. Um, Health Protection Agency in England has said much the same things. They do not pose a, do not pose a risk to health from smart meters, and that's specifically on smart meters. The IEEE of the USA, the IEEE being the Institute of Electronic and Electrical Engineers of the USA, um, basically saying the same things again. They, they're one of their committees goes a little bit further, includes RF emissions from smart meters should be considered to be safe. Um, health departments don't usually say they're safe, they just say they meet all the necessary standards. Um, this perhaps repeats a bit of what was on the previous slide, talking about WHO and IARC. Um, I won't go into it in detail. The only thing is there are some reports, if people want to see some of these um, regulatory reports by regulatory agencies, there's some here, particularly being done in America. There's the California Council of Science and Technology, Maine, Electric Power Research Institute and SAGE Associates. These have all done review studies looking at the possible health effects from smart meters and have all basically come out with the same sort of conclusions that there aren't any proven health effects. In Victoria, we've had the study by Zombolis and Wood. Um, Andrew Wood's here. <coughs> yes, yes, he's still here. Yeah. Um, it's always good to have studies using your local technology and your local systems. So this was a, a good piece of work that was done. It's, if you want the full report, which is about 90 pages, it's available through the Department of Primary Industry, Victoria. Um, they did a lot of measurements in various configurations and they produced some um, useful measurements of the actual exposures of people in the, in the real situation. Um, this is a summary that Andrew put into one of the appendices. He reviewed not only what was done in Victoria, but was what's been done overseas. And basically, since the exposures from AMI are well below those from mobile phone handsets, which, are, which were studied extensively overseas, it can be said no substantive evidence for health effects from the exposure of AMI RF fields. So basically, everybody's pretty much on agreement. Um, we heard other people talk about the different technologies in houses. So in this particular report, they also did measurements around some of the other technologies that, are that occur in houses. So you've got mobile cordless phones, routers, Wi-Fi networks, microwave ovens, and all the other bits of technology that you've got around your house. Uh, basically, the these exposures will tend to be higher than from the smart meter exposure. And they've done some measurements here, which I'll show you on the next slide. Basically, once again, the percent of the up hands are general public limit. So you've got the AMI meter outside, meaning outside the house. So it's in front of the meter box. AMI meter inside the house, so that's on the wall behind where the meter's installed. So you can see they're less than 1% of the up-hands are general standard. By comparison, you've got microwave oven, baby monitor, mobile phone, cordless phone, so it's fairly low, and if you're inside the house, it's even lower than if you're standing in front of the meter. They also did some measurements on the 50 hertz signals around the meters, so once again, it's the percentage of the ELF general public limit for 50 hertz, not, not RF. So the AMI meter outside, compared with the old rotating disc meter outside, so it's even a <coughs> slight reduction compared with the old disc meter, and the AMI meter inside the house compared with the old rotating disc meter. So in both cases there's a reduction, but anyway, it's still around 1% of the standard. So it's not an area where you'd really be particularly concerned about. There are other things in the house which might give you higher levels of exposure, but nevertheless, well within the, the standards that are available. Um, about the status of the smart meter rollout around Australia, as you, most of you would be aware because you're Victorians, the Victorian rollout is more, much more advanced than in other states. Um, there's supposed to be a full rollout in Victoria by the end of this year. I'm not sure how it's actually working, but that was certainly the target. So it's full rollout for residential and small business customers. Most of the other states are looking at a rollout in either specific areas as a sort of experiment 
or for new refurbished and replacement installation needed. So they haven't gone on as far as Victoria's gone, and Victoria's the experiment as far as Australia's concerned into how far this rollout should go. In most of the other states, the future of the rollout is not quite clear at this stage. It depends on, the, on government policy decisions. Overseas, down the bottom, the future rollout in the UK includes an opt-out provision, um, something that isn't here, but uh, it's a, it's, it is a possibility, of course. In the USA, the rollout's been going for several years, five to ten years in different states. Um, there have been concerns about people and the possible effects of the meters. And in some cases, opt-out provisions have been approved by the regulators, so California, Michigan, and there's a number of other states where they've, <coughs> with hindsight, have included opt-out provisions. Um, you need to note that sometimes the people who opt out have to pay extra for the privilege because it means their meters have to be read manually. So uh, in some cases, but not all cases, the opt-out provision requires an extra cost. What about people who do feel that the smart meters are affecting them? Um, I don't have a simple answer to this, and I don't think anybody else does either. The only thing I can think of is, is that th this um, rather vague condition known as electromagnetic hypersensitivity, or VHS, could be coming into play, but it's, very, it's not really very clear exactly what that is. But I've taken the WHO statement on this as a, as good a statement as any. It's characterised by a variety of non-specific symptoms. It can be headaches, dizziness, general feeling of unwellness, um, a whole range of things of that nature. The symptoms are real and can vary widely in their severity. Some people certainly can't go near electronic equipment. Whatever its cause, it can be a disabling problem for the affected individual. It has no clear diagnostic criteria and there is no, and well that's one thing, it's not a, it's not a, something that can be clearly diagnosed for people. There's no scientific basis for linking EHS symptoms to EMF exposure, which I guess gives the industry some relief. Um, based on the sort of studies that have been done overseas where people who claim to be EHS sensitive and not have been put in situations where they're exposed to various sorts of radio signals but not knowing whether the signals are there or not. And in most of the studies where this has been done, um, it's been found that the non-EHS and EHS people perform about the same. So on that basis, it's not clear that the people who claim to have EHS are particularly sensitive to EMF exposure. So that's where that statement comes from. EHS is not a medical diagnosis, nor is it clear that it represents a single medical problem. So I'm not sure what the answer is. Nobody really does know what the answer is in this department, but that's the only thing I can really think of that might explain why people are concerned about the smart meters from a health perspective. So in summarising, the industry bases its understanding of health effects smart meter after on the views of relevant expert health agencies or authorities. Um, we don't claim to have the knowledge ourselves, but we use the expertise of the bodies that are expected to be expert in this area. The overall exposure from smart meters is very low and well below the recognised up exposure limits, either up Hanson or ICNIP or any other limit that's out there. No health effects caused by smart meter exposure have been proven scientifically, and that's where I've come back to the statement previously. ENA is finalising a web-based brochure on smart meters and their possible health effects, so that, that it's, it's very similar to what I've been talking about here, but it's just putting it up so that, that people can find it and, and use it for information. And some further research into people's concerns about smart meter health effects could be worthwhile. And this is not necessarily on the exposure side, but what it is about smart meters that make people concerned that it's causing health effects. Thank you. Thank you.